so you are putting your wife's needs above what God says you should do. And that's why I say. The question is, have we put too much emphasis on making our spouse happy? Hey, you guys, can you see me? Yes, yes we can. Happily, I can see. Can, can you hear see, me? I can see someone for one. Now it froze. All right. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah. All right. So, frozen, but go ahead. I can still hear you. Okay. First, I'm gonna introduce myself. My name is Chaz. Um, so just to pick off where y'all, I know basically the topic came from the Will and Jada incident, and we're looking at it as Ahab and Jezebel, correct? Uh, I look at it as this. Um, God always give us the the opportunity to make decisions. Now, he know the decisions that we're going to make before we make them. He know the situation that's about to happen before is made, right? So, with the situation with Jada and Will, Jada looked at Will as the head, the protector. So, to see your husband sitting there laughing, now you're feeling like, is you're not protecting me. So we don't know exactly how that may have went left, but once he looked at her and realized, you know, how it shamed him as a man and him as his family, then he took action. Not saying that the actions was correct. Mm. Okay. So, so me, uh, um, okay. I always say spirits transfer. So we don't know what spirit may have been on Jada. They may have transferred to Will. It's how I look at it. Okay. I have a question for you. Okay. <clears throat> From a biblical perspective, do you believe mm -hmm. that, um, that the directions that – from our perspective, we're not there, but from our perspective, would you, would you say that the directions that she has requested the family go in, whether it's to him or she, that she's made social – uh, public on social media, would you say that those are directions that are serving God? I wouldn't say that is directly serving God. Um, however, Indirectly? I am not here to judge her platform either. So right. her platform, how can I say this? Even though her platform is not Consider what a Christian would say is judging God. It could still help somebody else in the long run. Right. <clears throat> so uh, let me put it in this, in this perspective. If, if you're saying that, like, I understand not condemning, right? <clears throat> but when you <clears throat> explain the scenario of will in what he did, you explained, you gave judgment. You gave your, you you gave your judgment. Judgment is basically, hey, this is what, this is what is going on. This is what, you know, I can understand. I can't understand. No, you, you had a judgment on it. Not a condemnation and not a, but you, you still made a judgment call about it. Right? What do you mean? Like, you, the, like, <laughs> To judge something is to observe and analyze something and come up with an opinion mm -hmm. about it. Right. Right? So mm -hmm. you you judged it, meaning like you can judge it as like, hey, I think the heart posture of like, you know, this is supposed to be the protector. He's supposed to protect someone from jokes. That's, mm -hmm. that's judging his actions of, hey, this is good or this is bad, right? I, I get what you're saying, but I'm saying it in the form of as the role of a male, and especially, and I'm going to just even say it, for the black community, as a woman, we look for our men to protect. Right. And from the eyes of women, because I know a lot of things, a lot of comments have definitely been coming from women. Um. Most women, and I've heard it from Christian and non-Christian, looked at it as that was his way of protecting his wife, not saying that the situation was correct 
or handled correctly, but it was still that sense of where he felt he was protecting his wife. And like I said, he felt. Right. So uh, mm-hmm. as, you know, believers, right? Mm-hmm. Our, 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 we're called to judge right from wrong. We're not called mm-hmm. to condemn anybody. We're not called to say, hey, this person is worse than me, this person. But we're called to judge. Right, because we all fall short. Right. right, yeah, exactly. Definitely. But if our actions and our standard is based on what God says to do, if, if my actions are based on what God says to do, and C. Love's actions are based on what his wife says he, she should do, our actions are going to look very different. Yeah. So right. if you are looking at what from a that's why I said I have an issue with from a biblical perspective, people's opinion on this that are believers that say, Hey, I'm I'm like thumbs up for this. It's you're not supposed to love your wife more than God. You're not right. supposed to assault somebody because your wife feels a certain way you're not supposed to do that so you are putting your wife's needs above what god says you should do and that's why i say in the same way if you are loving a person more than god you're going to do their will rather than god's will right right and so when that happens God's laws, when God's laws come in conflict with that person's laws, that person's laws win. So you end up saying things like, love made me do something crazy. Mm -hmm. Because you love someone more than God. Right. Now, I'm not saying people can't make mistakes. I'm not saying anything like that. But to justify, like, no, 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 I, I stand with this decision. No, you, you, you can't. And especially when you look at the history, and like I said, I, I don't know any of these people. Like, we don't know right. any of them. But from what they have made public, it appears that she does not have any interest in, and he doesn't have any interest in doing what God wants him to do when it comes in conflict of what his wife wants him to do, especially when it comes in the context of uh, relationship, open relationship, yeah. this, that, yeah. different things. And like I said, I don't want to put, I don't want to put church standards on people that aren't even believers. They may not even be believers. I was just about to say that. <laughs> right. But, but for us to justify it as believers to say, no, that's right. Just because I'm black or just because I'm a woman or just because I'm a wife, it, we're, we're believers first. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And so I don't think we should ever justify it because that. And I think it actually does damage to black Americans more than it actually helps. Mm-hmm. You know? Right. I get what you're saying. Um, I also do look at it because I think even as Christians, we always want to look at things at a quote unquote Christian's perspective. Right. Um, but however, there is a human side of us. You have to step outside and realize that we are still humans. Mm-hmm. We are going to fall short, fall short. So whether we are believers or not, you know, we know right, right from wrong, but sometimes we fall short. And so yeah. we have to deal with the consequences at the end of the day. Right. right. I, I, I agree with that. I guess, I guess my thing is I'm just, I'm confused why people, believers in particular, and especially, you know, typically it's, it's coming from, uh, like you said, black women that most are, are Christian are agreeing with this. And I, I don't understand it. I think they're agreeing with the, the fact of looking at it from a perspective of him, like I said, seeming like he's protecting his wife. That's that's the views that I've been getting from different comments and different things as being what we as women want in our lives, protectors. Right. right. But 
at the end of the day, his actions still weren't right. So if right. Will had walked up there and just killed him. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm just saying I mean, from, you know, the, yeah, perspective, the perspective of what I've been reading right. and things. Yeah, I think you're, what you're sharing is important because that's what I asked. I want to know the perspective and that that I could see how someone could come to that conclusion. But my mm -hmm. electricity is probably going to go off in a minute. There we go. It went off. Oh, wow. There, it is. <laughs> <laughs> there we oh, go. Wow. Back. Okay. So I could see how someone could come to that conclusion, kind of. But again, I just think that, like, we, we've gotten to a place in church where we're called to be a servant leader. We're called to be a protecting leader. And the, the, the servant or the leader part is kind of thrown out. It's like, I want to protect her. I don't want to lead her. I want a servant. I don't want a leader. I want someone who's going to just, I, in no way, from what we've seen in the public, and like I said, we're looking from the sidelines, has he stood up and in, in taken control of the marriage? It's like her. Right. And, and that's kind of the issue is like, there's nothing wrong with protecting your wife from real threats. <laughs> but when when it boils down to like something bothers my wife, I'm going to attack it. Well, what if something good bothers your wife? Like asking her to stay faithful to you. What if, you know, bringing them to church bothers your wife, bring your kids to church, not, you know, identifying with transgender, all these other kinds of things. What if that bothers your wife? <laughs> you know? So, that's where I see it getting into sticky ground. I don't see an issue with, um, I don't see an issue with protection. That's good. Mm -hmm. Protection from a real threat. And, 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 and leadership. And I think that when we use that as an example of marriage, especially people that are believers and saying, bravo, that's not good because it's not a, healthy Christian marriage and it's nothing we should be looking towards in my opinion All right. I get what you're saying and as the head he should be the leader but how can you lead if you never follow God say pick up your cross and follow him so if you never followed him how can you lead and that's why he's following his wife mm -hmm. and right. but in the same sentence, if you're the head, we're the real. That's why I put in the comments oh, when somebody weird. said, they're the tell, no, we're the real. We came from your real. We protect your heart. That's what we're made to do. We're supposed to be your. So, so if you don't know your role, I'm sorry, y'all been sick. <clears throat> but if you don't know your role as the man of the house, the head of the house, who are you? How can you lead your household? Right. And, and I think there, there is a, um, in, in Genesis chapter three, um, in the fall, it says, uh, let's say to Eve, uh, uh, there are translations that read, in the curse that God gave to woman and then God, that God gave to man that says, uh, for the one for women, I'll greatly increase your pains during childbirth with pain. You will birth, give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. But there is a, um, you know, a different translation that says you will desire to rule over your husband. And, I think mm. sometimes when you take that, when you take God out of the equation, for whatever reason, a lot of times, if he's not following God, like Ahab, um, she'll do whatever she can and want to rule if she, over her husband if she's not submitted before God as well. Mm. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? The roles get reversed yeah. immediately. Yeah. And, but if she is submitted before God, 
she would push him to try to be in that. I don't know why she would marry someone like that, but <laughs> she would she would try to push him to be that head of the house, right. you know, um, in in the head of of their home. But um, yeah, I, I just like I said, I just the only thing that I have an issue with is this idea that as long as you're loving, as long as you're loving, you're, you're doing what your wife wants, you're making her happy, and you're willing to die for her. You're a good husband. And that's not true. Ahab did what his wife wanted, and it was against God. Ahab did a lot of good things, or a lot of good things in Jezebel's eyes, but it wasn't good for God. And I'm sure he might have even died for her, but it still wasn't good and mm -hmm. so that that's the right. only thing that i think as christians we got to be careful we need to make sure yes husbands need to protect their wives need to love their wives we need to see real good examples of that but when we are loving our wives at the expense of of you know not obeying god's laws and and being evil to other people that's not that's not right you know, like we can't applaud that. All right. All right. So And also when you said um happy wife, happy life, I do not agree with that. Yeah. Some people in this world are just not happy. And that's just like saying the way to a male's heart is um through his stomach. Some of y'all can't even cook. So I mean <laughs> that's the same analogy right there. Right. Right. <laughs> so yeah. You know, happiness is within, and happiness is starting with yourself and your love life with God. And right. when you realize that and you start dealing with yourself first, then you'll be able to find happiness and love right. in your situations with God in it. All right. Absolutely. For sure. All right, you guys. Thank you for hopping on. I appreciate it. All right. No problem. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, yeah, no one can be an idol, even your wife. And I think like right. I said, the only issue that I have is that sometimes people in church, believe, other believers, are making it like, oh, you're a, good, you're a good husband if she's an idol. You're a good husband if you're making her happy. And that's not, that's not the case. It's God first, your wife after. Um, right. She's causing you to... Um, to, to leave that, then it's not it's, it, to leave the Lord and not follow his ways. And that's different. And uh, the only reason we brought that up is because it, it, you know, we've had believers that will like applaud what happened. And we're kind of like, that's not a good example of marriage. So that's the only reason why uh, I'm just going to see. Hey, what's your name? Hello. Sorry. Hi, my name's LeClaire. <laughs> this is the next time it was going, so. <laughs> How's it going? Where are you, it's where going you, pretty good. Where are you calling from? And then what's your what's your comment, question, whatever? Um, I'm calling from Charlotte, North Carolina. Nice. Yeah. And I just came in, so um, I'm not sure of the topic that you guys are talking about. I do enjoy watching. Um, I've been watching for like maybe, I guess a couple of months now. And it's good to see um, upstanding black men kind of give commentary um, on, you know, current topics and everything that's going on because I struggle. <laughs> I'm in my forties, so um, I don't see much out here. And so to hear you guys speaking positive and just having productive conversations is wonderful to hear, so. Yeah. Oh, thank you. What do you have any opinions about what we what we've been talking about today? We've been uh, today we read about the story of Ahab and Jezebel, and so people were we were talking about you know uh, just the, in terms of the Will Smith situation. Um, my question was, uh, you know, why is it that uh, there are some believers that um, kind of view putting your wife on a pedestal as um, as okay, even if it means doing things that are not good? For me, 
I think that the woman in a relationship as a nurturer has a certain responsibility to protect her man in a certain in a certain degree. And I think in that moment, I understand what took place. But at the same time, there's a time and a place for everything. So I think in that moment when he was accepting a wonderful award, award that is a milestone and it's something that's glorious and wonderful, his actions overshadow the entire situation. And now there's talk of discipline because of the way he behaved. So in a certain degree, I think in that moment, Jada should have stopped him, you know, knowing and looking at the big picture of the position her man was in and the award that he was there to receive, because now we have to deal with the backlash and everything that follows with the actions that, that took place. Hmm. So, um, I mean, I don't know if I'm off the mark, you know. No, it's your opinion. I was just asking your yeah. opinion. Um, I do think that, unfortunately, as a as a brown person, we have to conduct ourselves ourselves in a certain manner. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is, you know. Um, so, yeah, I think that she had a responsibility in a certain degree to kind of um, be her helpmate in that situation and try to um, diffuse the situation a little bit so he would not fly off the handle. You know, just like Denzel Washington was saying, you know, be careful because in your most important moment, the devil's always lurking in order to destroy everything you've worked all these years to build. Mm. So if a woman is being a help me, then she's wise enough to know and see things that are going on when he might be in a moment of rage. And the same thing happened with my father. He almost killed a man when he was younger. And my mother, being a God-fearing woman, talked some sense into him. So, um, you know, that's where I'm coming from with, with this kind of statement. Well, so. with that situation in particular, like I said, we don't know anyone's mind. We can't. <clears throat> but the, the picture that was painted there when you explained it seems different than the picture I saw, where, mm -hmm. he's, la where he's laughing about it. Well, and that then, her reaction... <laughs> makes him do this not a what did he say you know like he was just going off the handles but because she was that way then he reacted in that in that manner and that's what i, I we we can't put christian rules on non-christian people yeah you know but as believers who know what a biblical marriage should be like. I think sometimes we're getting lost in the romanticized image of a man serving and protecting his wife to a degree where anything goes, even if it's against God's will. Like, right. And, and that's where we kind of came up with, that's where the whole Ahab and Jezebel story kind of ties into this. Mm -hmm. Because with Ahab, you see a man who is giving into everything that Jezebel wants, desires, and everything that she wants and desires is against God. Everything she worships, she worships a false god, Baal, and he gives into everything she wants. So that's kind of like where this whole story kind of ties like into with the whole Jada and Will. We're kind of maybe relating that to that story. Well, yeah, that's all I was going to say. There's a backstory. There might even be a backstory tied to why he went up on that stage and took whatever out on Chris Rock. I mean, we don't know if they have something going on, if it's a culmination of everything that's gone on over the year, I mean, over the year with them putting their business out and all this social media stuff spilling into a mental health thing, you know. Um, but yeah, there's definitely some type of backstory right, um, right. in that situation, you know, and this is what happens when you put all your business out <laughs> for everybody to see. Well, right. also when you, when you put someone else's happiness above what's right in the person right. that decides what's right is God. And so when that happens, you start saying things like, Oh, well, uh, love makes you do some crazy things. Love makes you do. No, no, it doesn't. It, it doesn't, it doesn't make you do wrong things. Right. Um, you know, the, the Bible says that love does not, rejoice in wrongdoing and in no way shape or form does jesus ever say it's okay 
to hit somebody for saying something, for joking about something, especially something like that. And so, you know, like I said, my whole issue is when believers are like, hey, I, I love I love this. As a believer, we're supposed to be beacons of truth and we're supposed to love things that are right. And if we are, if we as believers are the only lights in the world and we are applauding at something that's wrong, whether it, whether it's because we have an emotional connection to the characters this actor has played, or it's because we have an emotional connection to the color of their skin and we see oh, a black man hitting another black man for a black woman or whatever. Or, or, hey, it's a husband protecting his wife. It's still over-romanticizing actions that are saying, that are justifying things that are wrong. Right. And that's the only issue I have. I'm not saying we need to hold them to the standard that believers are held to. Not at all. Mm -hmm. But it's just when us as believers start applauding that, it's, I feel like it's confusing for people on the outside to really understand what we're believe it. You know what I'm saying? Well, we're supposed to be in this world, but not of this world. Right. And there's a reason for that. You know what I mean? Because like you said, when other people, other people are paying attention, there's people that are on the fence that are dealing with church hurts. My, my father's a pastor. So I've seen like any and everything go down in the church. And so I know how hurt people are. And a lot of times they just want to see somebody who stands on what God's word says. You know, pretty much. And upholding what is biblically right and biblically sound. You know what I mean? Not going along with the culture and what everybody else says. And that's hard. Right. Because you're kind of singled out, you know, as somebody who's not part of the culture, you know, who's not, you know, ha who hasn't conformed. That's a good right. word. You know, to whatever is worldly and appeals to be correct. Mm -hmm. You know. So. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. well, well, thank you. Oh, this is a <laughs> this is a surprise. Like I said, this is the first time I had joined, so it kind of caught me off guard. Yeah. Well, thank you, <laughs> thank you for your, thank you so much for your support, and thank you for um, for hopping on and following us, and for everybody that's here. Eventually, we're gonna switch over to YouTube, so we'll oh. be going live there. Um. So make sure to follow the YouTube page. Um, the link is in the bio. But thank you again for hopping on. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Support. Sure. You're very welcome. Bye. All right. Well, go ahead and bring you back on. And then we got someone else in the in the in the request waiting. Chris. What's up? What's going on? Nothing much. How y'all doing? Pretty good. Yeah, nice. All right, let the conversation begin. <laughs> <laughs> Conversation's winding down, but <gasps> no, we just getting started. Just Dude, getting started. Just starting, huh? Had to do some research, you know. <laughs> Had to do some research. We were reading. Um, we were reading about Ahab and Jezebel. Okay. And we were reading about. So the original like topic is. The idea, some ideas that have kind of crept into the church of like, happy wife, happy life. And we addressed that and talked about how, well, in the sense that Ahab was doing things to make Jezebel happy, like building temples to other gods, things like that. That's not always the case, right? Um, and then just this is the, all in a nutshell. And then we talked about how the idea of servant leadership. Right. Um, which is what, you know, in church, they typically say husbands should be servant leaders. And I agree with that. And I think we we agreed with it and, and talked about how, like, no question, that should be the case, <clears throat> just like Jesus did. But many times when it really starts getting into the church and church culture and things like that, the leadership part goes away and it just becomes servant. And a man who is just a servant of his wife and not the head of his wife and not leading in any way and just kind of doing things to make her happy. Um, you know, she, speaking of which, I actually got a text from my wife. Uh, okay.
okay, I should tell me about a tornado. So just doing things to make your wife happy uh, rather than actually leading her, which is what God's called you to do, is just as bad and as, as not being a servant at all. You take out the servant part or you take out the leadership part. They're both wrong. But many times guys who are just being the servant and not the leader are still being applauded. And um, I think that's dangerous for us to have in the church, that belief. And, and I think Steve Love touched on some things similar to that, too. Yeah. What, what was your thoughts, Steve Um, Just the whole notion of, uh, like we talked about earlier, with um, making sure your wife is happy over pleasing God. Right. Over and holiness. Over holiness. Right. And so, like we talked about earlier with the Ahab and Jezebel, he saw a weak leader in Ahab who was run by Jezebel. He gave in to all her wishes and commands, even though it was against God, right? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I think that's where this whole thing kind of ties to is just, um, you know, making sure that we are not allowing ourselves to make our spouse happy over making God happy right. and what he wants. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the whole premise of marriage is, you know, to, to like the whole goal of marriage is to just express God's love for us. Right. Exactly. Like that is the, that's the whole purpose of marriage, right. To, to just be an, uh, another form, another representation of how God loves us. Right. Um, so it definitely cannot become, um, you know, first priority of obviously honoring God, right? I mean, I think that that's really important. Um, I think, you know, as, as men, uh, you know, our weakness is a woman, right? Uh, whether it's the lack of our control um, with other women that's not our wives, looking just in history, you look at just wanting to please our wife, wanting to, like you said, idolize our, our, our women, or anything like that, our inability to really lead, decipher, um, stray away from or, or deny certain women in certain situations, our inability to do all those things um, has really been a downfall of, of a lot of great men, to be honest. Um, from We can go all the way from biblical times all the way to, you know, to now, if we're being honest, right? So I think we need to, as men, um, really stand firm in our convictions, right? I don't think there's nothing wrong with pleasing your wife. I don't think there's nothing wrong with, you know, putting your wife being your queen and honoring her and, and, and loving her and be willing to die for her, right? Um, I don't think there's, I think that's what God calls us to do. However, I think it comes secondary to um, our obedience to God, right? It has to, right? Because if we're not, then, you know, any time our wife may feel some type of way we won't be able to to you know lead her correctly and lead her family correctly right um angle i was reading this book bro they got a lot of great stuff in it and it was just kind of saying that you know every woman wants a man um to love her to 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 you know die for her and all those things but every woman wants a man that is strong in his convictions first right because if they can manipulate you and sway you any way that means you being a man as your core, like, what are you answering to? What is your core beliefs that you're not going to sway on, right? right. Um, and I think that's why, and not to, I'm not trying to bring this about me or anything like that, but I think hey, that's guys. why, like, hey, even before, for example. Huh? I'm going to, at, at 9.30, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to run out because the tornado is heading towards where I am. So I'm going to have to run to my parents' house. They've got a shelter. But go okay. ahead, keep going, keep going. But yeah, I mean, I, I think that's why any woman can appreciate a man that's um, that can make those sacrifices, that can be disciplined, right? That can say, hey, I'm not going out partying and drinking and smoking. I got to go work out. Or I got to go do this. Or I got to go do that. I hit the books, right? Or I got to go study for the bar exam. I got to do all these different things because any any woman can appreciate, man, that's a man about his convictions. That That's a man that's not going to just sway based on what people say or what the society changes. And I think any woman wants a man that can do that. Now, do they want somebody um, that they can, I guess, manipulate or, or kind of bend? No, 
right? Because if a woman can walk all over you, she she probably gonna lose respect for you in the long run, you know, as a whole, right? Oh, and I think good. us as being the men, especially the man of God, we have to be like, no, baby, like this is the way to go, right? Um, and sometimes I think it's about how we relay that, but um, you know, we gotta stand heavy on those convictions to where, hey, if if for example, and we just gonna keep it real, right? Yeah. For example, if you're, let's say you're married and you know your wife starts getting into the whole astrology and and and, and rocks and and universe and like you gotta shut that down immediately, right? Yeah. And yeah. you're gonna be like, baby, like that that's not it. That's what we're not doing in this house, right? Um, and obviously there's a way to do that, but if you allow, it's just like Adam and Eve, right? The devil's gonna come after her first, and it might just be a suggestion. Right? Because the devil knows if I can get to her, she might be able to sway him. Right. Right? Because I mean we love you know, and I'm not I'm not too naive to think, bro, if I was married if I was Adam and I was married to Eve and this is my woman, this is my woman I love, bone in my bone, and you know, she's naked and all that stuff and she's telling me to do one thing. I'm not super religious or super holy this thing. I'm just gonna be like, Oh no, I would never do that. I know what God told me, right? Because right. that's your woman. You you might be a little be like, oh, she she might have a little, you know, different a, a ability to kind of sway you certain ways. But if you can establish that, hey, this is the non-negotiables, this is what we're not doing, um, I think that goes uh that goes a long way. I think that goes a long way. And what I I'ma say this, what I what I can appreciate about the whole Will situation, X, Y, and Z, I think Every man, look, I've never been married. I'm, 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 you know, I'm not in love in the marriage context. So all I can say is, man, I don't know how I could respond if somebody threatens my wife. Zach, okay. you're oh, married. Well, well, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. Let me finish. 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 You said threaten. Okay, let me finish, though. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking about that situation in general. Let me, let me, let me finish. So if somebody threatens your wife, you'll be ready to, 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 to go off, right? Threat, like yes, in, in, threat, any, in yes. any different, and that means physically or whatever, right? Threat, so yes. I, I understand like just being a husband and wanting for, to, to protect your family, right? Now, what he, did he take it too far? Of course, like that, that's need to hit sit. I'm not talking about that aspect. I'm talking about the aspect of like wanting to protect your wife and wanting to be like, nah, bro, like I don't care who it is, you're not gonna come at my family, right? And now, obviously, there, there's always different situations. You can always handle it better and okay. handle it like Jesus handled it, right? Got you. But I think it also goes to say, like, I, and this is why I hang around with my friends and my, I hope my wife as well, right? I want people around me, my wife, my friends, that are not going to put me in situations where I got to throw everything away. Okay. Right? Where, I, right. Gotta, where I have to, like, we only have put my life on the line. I've only, I've only got a couple minutes. The only thing I do want to say, you just said a lot of good things that I do agree with. The, the only thing I disagree with <clears throat> is that, um, and for people that are like, oh, why is Jezebel and Ahab? You had to be there at the, con at the beginning of the conversation. So you got to follow the page. Um, right. But when you say threatened, you said that's not, that, that's not what happened. No one was threatened. And that's different than the situation that actually happened. In the situation you described where someone's threatening your family or something, of course. Right. In a situation where about. every celebrity is teased to a degree, and sometimes it's been even worse than that, it's, it's different. And here's the only thing that I, that, I, that I think is not a good example, and I think people who are believers should not see it as a, a clapping moment or a respect moment or anything is because of the control and the lack of leadership on his part from what we see. And the idea of, if she's not happy, uh, then, then that's all I'm here for. I just, I'm just here to make her happy. I need to make her happy. I need to make her happy. If she doesn't like this joke someone said, even if I'm laughing at it at first and I see, oh, she rolls her eyes about it. Now I get to hit somebody. Mm. That is having your wife above everything else. And I'm not putting Christian laws on them, right? Because we, we don't know, but they're probably not believers, right? So 
But the, the issue that I have is that Christians and believers have romanticized the idea of making your wife happy equals Ephesians 5, lay down and die for your wife, when in reality, we're not called to make her happy, we're called to make her holy. And when we're supposed to protect our wives, we're supposed to protect them from, like you said, physical threats and things like that, of course. But more importantly, spiritual things, the spirit of jealousy, the spirit of gossip, the spirit of laziness, the spirit of all these other things, we are called to fight those battles spiritually and protect our wife from that, just like Jesus did, does for us when he died on the cross and everything. But And he was a servant leader, but he wasn't a servant follower. He still led, like you said, right. like you said, Chris, you want to lead. And, and in the book that you're reading, it talks about leading. And you're absolutely right. But the only issue sometimes is what you're telling guys is 100% accurate. But sometimes I find that the church and sometimes women in the church will take this. My lights are probably about to go out in a minute. But they will take this and they will say, yeah, he's supposed to lead me. He's supposed to lead me. He's supposed to lead me. And I'll just feel naturally inclined. That's like my place. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 16, I think, and in one of the original translations, it can be translated two ways, but it talks about how one of the curses that he gives the woman was that your desire will be to rule over your husband, but he will rule over you in his plan, right? So if you take God out of the picture and you take, you take us as flawed human beings, many times even as, as good-willed as they may be. You know, I talk to my wife. Sometimes she's like, yeah, sometimes I just want to control you just because I don't know why. I just do, you know? And, and she's a good-willed, God-fearing woman, you know? But I think that from a man's perspective, you're right. You should do all those things that you're saying. But when we're speaking from the church's perspective, both people need to be held accountable. And right. we cannot... We, we, we've gotten to this point of trying to get away from a chauvinistic Christianity to where we've gotten to a feminized Christianity that panders to women's wants rather than a wife's needs. But and I, I, think, and I think we need to make sure that we don't go that route because I've seen that happen and it sounds good. And a lot of women clap it and some men clap it. But in reality, it's just like Ahab. No, he but if we're being honest, thing. bro, like that's right. like... It's, it's literally all throughout the Bible, right? Like all throughout the Bible of women, women not, and I'm not, not a bashing woman or nothing, but women making choices for the family or for something to happen. And then the man just kind of following along and not being like, nope, that ain't it. We're not doing it that right. way, right? We can even right. talk from, um, you know, Ishmael and um, Isaac, right? And sleeping with uh, his maid. That was, that wasn't, that wasn't his Sarah's, idea. That was Sarah's, Sarah's idea. Right. Yeah. So you could have been like, hey, no, um, we're not doing this. This is not what we're doing. Right. So and I think. I think, you you know, obviously you want to please your wife and you want to be a servant leader and everything like that. But like there's times that every man, like I said, you can look in the Bible, you play in today's society. There's times when every man need, needs to needs to be like needs to stand firm in his conviction and be like, no, we're not doing this. Right. This is not what we're doing. This is not the way God is leading us. And, and that's just what it is. Right. And, and they need to that's where the whole submission aspect comes on. Be like, all right, baby, I trust you. I trust you being led by God and I'm going to follow your lead. And now the and thing is the thing on, on top of that, to piggyback onto that. The other thing that's very important is that we need men need to understand that just because we are doing the right thing and we are presenting it the right way. She may not want to submit to that and it may not make her happy, but we still right. need to do it. And let me just right. say this one last thing, and then I'll let you guys keep going. I'm just going to take the camera with me. But in the same way that we're supposed to honor our mother and father, right? There was a king in the Bible who his mother wanted these idols. And what did he do? He kicked her out. He said, you're not, in, you're not welcome in this palace anymore. I don't care if you're my mom because God comes first. And sometimes, like I said, we, 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 there is an idea that, Yes, we need to do the right thing. We need to 100% like correct, hey, we need to lead our wives and things. But sometimes they still won't want to listen. They might want the crystal rocks and the, the universe and all that kind of stuff and say, I don't want that. 
And you got to still say, I love you, even if you're not happy. There's no guarantee she's going to be happy with you just because you're leading correctly. And that's the problem sometimes that I see in the church is there's this idea that if you lead correctly, she'll submit to it. And that's not true because God leads correctly and none of us submit to that. But right. you guys keep going. Right. I'm just going to run. And, and I mean, even see, like, I also think there's, like, I think there's growth we can do on both parts, right? So, yes, and, and, and I don't want to make it come off like we're just saying, oh, rule over your wives, you're a dictator, and whatever you say, go, right? Um, I think with being a good leader is you have to um, know how to relay that message, right? To say, hey, baby, I, I, I understand what you're saying. I understand your perspective, when you're coming from. But um, I don't think this is the right move because of X, Y, and Z, and yada, 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 right? Like, you got to – it's more than just saying, oh, I'm the man, so I need to rule, and whatever I say, go. It's, it's more deeper than that, right? Because I think as men, we do need to take into account what our wives say and their opinions. I think that is wise because sometimes they, they can look at things from a different perspective, right? They can see different spirits than we can, or they can, they can watch our backs differently than we can, right? So I think we do have to take that into account. Um, but I think being a good leader is being able to observe all those things, right? And right. then still make the best option and, and the best course of action for the family as a whole, right? right. I think sometimes we can, we can go on both sides. We can get to the point to where, you know, men are too passive and yep. whatever our woman says goes. Or we can to get to the point where, oh, we're just a dictator and we got to control everything. Right. right? But no, no, churches, no churches are teaching guys to be dictators. A lot of churches today are teaching No, I think that guys was... No, I think that's more in the back in the older days, though. I'm saying that. Oh, I yeah, think yeah, back yeah. in the day. Yeah, yeah, we moved past that. Yeah. But yeah. we've moved way past that now. Right. To the, going to the opposite end. Yeah, to the opposite, opposite. I think yeah. I think it's about having that balance. Oh, of course. Of course it's about having the balance. I 100% agree with you. And I think, but I think we've gone way past balance to the point where a, a passive husband, like the example with the Will Smith stuff right now, He's not leading their, their marriage from what we can see. And, and we, um, like I said, we're not called to hold them to, to Christian standards if they're not believers. But that, the fact that there are, there, are, there are Christians, Christian women and men and churches saying that his actions reflect a, 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 a husband loving their wife like Christ loved the church is not accurate. If you take out the servant part or the leader part, it is completely wrong. It's just as bad. If you take if you take a husband that is not a good servant and you take a husband that's not a good leader, just as evil, just as wrong, just as incorrect. Yeah. Um. I'm I'm, I'm gonna keep it a buck though. Like I honestly think like because you know we can always say if I'm in this situation X Y and Z man. Honestly, I can't tell you how my initial emotions might want to react in a situation, you know, like that in general, right? Um, if somebody was whatever doing with my wife, right? Um, like, sleeping, however, like sleeping with your wife or just making sleeping with it, talking about my wife, whatever, right? Like playing with my wife in any shape or form. Now, I will say this, and I think that's because my emotions, my flesh and my emotions might want to jump up and pop off. I still do that to this day. Sometimes I want to just flash out. Now, given the fact that I have a spirit filter, right? Like, it's going to go through a certain filter that's going to be like, nah, Chris, you know we can't do that. You know we can't move like that, right? Um, the spirit's going to check my flesh, right? Because I have that filter in me, right? Um, but to say that, I'm just not going to feel some type of strike emotion to be like, to flash out, um, that might not be the case. But like I said, and I think that's why it's important that we always, even as men, especially as men, um, being that man and that lever and that certain, we have to submit ourselves to the spirit because just because we feel something or just because our feelings might tell us to do something, it has to go through the principles. And what are the principles? The principles of God, right? So if our feelings are telling us to do one thing and they can't get through the principles, right? Then it, it's dead, whatever that is, whether that's, oh, I'm going to, you know, not file this on my taxes or I'm going to not do this or I'm going to be dishonest here or I'm going to cheat on my wife. Whatever it is, it needs to go to that filter of, no, these are the principles I say I'm living by, which is God's principles, and this is what I'm always going to submit to. Now, does that mean it's going to be easy? No, it might be extremely hard sometimes, right? But as a man, if I can learn, if I can do that, 
as a man, then now I can teach my family how to do that, right? And I can teach my sons how to do that, my daughters how to do that. Because I always say this, principles over emotions. All times, all times. And that's with everything. That's when the woman's trying to tempt you. That's when, you know, you're trying to do something you're not supposed to do when God's, whatever it is. Um, right. Them, them, uh, emotions, I mean, principles over emotions. Yeah, right, right. no, for sure. For sure, 100%. We're on the, we're on the same page there. And, and I think my, my message that I try to deliver is what I see, like, if I see that you're a defensive back, and you're slow, right? I'm not going to have you working on your bench press. If I see that you are, um, if I see that you're, that you're really fast, but you're too weak, I'm not going to have you working on getting faster. I'm going to have you, man, I'm going to have you working on the things that you need, Right? So mm -hmm. when I look at the church in America in 2022, I don't see a lack of pastors telling husbands to die for their wives. I don't see a lack of husbands telling them to be servants. I do see a lack of them telling them to lead. Now, oh man, it is looking weird out here. So... Um, but so, Chris, with everything you're saying, I agree 110 percent. And I just want to let everybody know in the comments that and everyone watching that um, when I'm saying these things, me and Chris and C. Love, like none of us are disagreeing on where we think it should be. Um, I may be coming from from the perspective of this is what I see taught in the church today. And someone else may be coming from the perspective of this is the ideal. This is where we should be at. But we both agree. We all agree on what the ideal is. So I just want everyone to know that when they say, oh, I disagree with Chris or I disagree with Zach or whatever. Like we we all three of us agree on what the ideal is. The the question is whether or not the message in the church today is is teaching an extreme that's this way or that way. Yeah. So I just want and to I clarify that for everybody. And I think, I know a lot of people are saying, man, it's not realistic, we are human. And yeah, I understand that. And I think that's why, and that's why I'm not, I'm not mad at Will for, for feeling that way, right? Because we're all going to feel that way at some point or another, right? Like feelings are, we're all human. We're all going to have those feelings. And I think that's why it's important that we have to stay connected to the Holy Spirit. Because I can speak from personal, personal experience. The Holy Spirit has checked me in so many different situations. Right. And even when I'm preaching the gospel, sometimes, you know, I'm having a discussion to somebody and he's like, hey, shut up. Don't say that. Right. Or he's just like, hey, just let that person vent. Right. right. Or he tells me, hey, go speak to that person. Or he tells me to, uh, you know, don't even interact with that person because, you know, you're going to flash out or no, whatever. Right. So we just can't be so quick to just move strictly on our flesh and our emotions. Like I said, it's a process that doesn't happen overnight. Right. It goes through small things. Small things like what? Hey, clean up this for your wife. I know she didn't ask for it, but do this, right? Or go go serve this person or go give that person the shoes off your feet or go do something, whatever. Something that you don't necessarily not inclined to do. The spirit is telling you to do something. And as you do those things consistently, right, and hear that voice, when those moments come where you have to express self-control and you can't just pop off, that's when you'll be more in tune with that spirit to say, Man, I, I want to. Man, my, my, I'm itching. I'm itching, right? I'm itching to flash out, but I'm not going to, right? Because that spirit is kind of holding me in check, right? And you understand that, man, God is going to fight my battles, right? Now, am, am I saying that means, look, if somebody's coming at you and about to punch you in the face or, or do whatever or try to attack your family, obviously defend your family and stand firm, right, in that. Because I, I also feel like God didn't raise no punks and he didn't raise no, he raised warriors, especially as us being men. But we also have to know how to fight. Every fight is not just using your fists, right? right. Some fights you got to pray. Some fights you got to fast. Some fights you got to use self-control, right? Um, I looked at it like an example of me and my boy Byron. We was talking about this. Y'all remember in the movie Temptation when um, Lance Gross was, they were walking past a hallway and they had like four dudes like hollering at his girl. 
And she was like ready to go off. And he was like, no, let's get in the car. Let's get in the car. Let's get in the car. And she felt, she didn't feel protected because he didn't say or do anything. And it's like, you got to think, if he would have flashed out on one of them and they would have stomped him in the ground, all four of them, and now you would have been sitting there and they could have did anything with you, is that really protection, right? Like, is that really him protecting you? Versus him being like, nope, we're going to eat that, we're going to go and we're going to leave and we're going to be safe and we're going to, I'm going to protect my family this way, right? right. Every, every, every time you, you flash out and you're like, oh, I'm going to just use my fist, Bro, that, that ain't always what's smart, right? Because if you get locked up, if you get in jail, or if you even die, right? Let's say you got a gun and you yada, 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 did what you need to do. Now you in jail for five, your rest of your life, and now your family is suffering. Like, you know what I mean? Sometimes we got to just use wisdom, and every fight ain't got to be a, okay, I got to flash out, and I got to use my fist. And us as men, we have to use wisdom, and we have to be able to, like I said, be led by the spirit in those situations. Um, and sometimes you gotta let you gotta let the spirit hit, fight your battles, you know. Like sometimes you know people might. I, I, I'm an honest believer. I think the the devil does a great job in general, and people in general, but also Christians, at attacking our pride. Mm. Right? He's great at like, oh, that person gonna say something that's gonna get you out the box. Oh, you yeah. didn't really play football. You didn't play in a league. You must suck, right? Or do something to make you kind of be like, oh no, I gotta show you what's up, right? And now your life can change from a moment. Right. A moment your life can change from one bad decision, right? Um, and just from a lawyer aspect, you got to be careful, man, about how we react in certain situations. Because you push somebody, and let's say they hit the side of a counter and they die, that battery just turned into a murder. You right. know what I mean? So right. now you, you, it's a completely different situation. So you have to be able to... You got to be able to be, be careful in, in how you move and how you react. Right. Definitely. A hundred and a hundred and ten percent. See, love, what do you what are some of your thoughts while I bring this uh, this other this guest in here real quick? Oh, uh, go ahead. Bring him in. Bring him in. It's getting late. We're going to make it quick. So everyone that hops on, we got two people in the in the guest room. Go ahead and state your name, where you're from, your opinion and everything. And then, um, you know, question, comment. We'll go from there really quick. You let him in? No. Yeah, I did. What's up? Hi, What's guys. up? What's going hey. on? How are you guys? I'm doing, doing good. Well. How are you doing? I'm good. So what's I'm your uh, what's your what's your thought? Question, comment, whatever. Um gosh, I think I think it was an absolute wreck of a decision on like uh, like what could have been potentially like the best night like he got an Oscar but is anybody really going to remember that in five years they're going to be like oh you know that one year that he slapped somebody like yeah, sure. his he's going to be known by like the worst part of it so I um, I think his emotions and like whatever he's struggling with internally just overflowed into an action or I should say a reaction that was maybe not uh, the best choice or best reaction that he could have had. Right. I mean, his love for his wife did that, right? And I mean, that's undeniable. We can't deny that Will Smith I mean, he loves his wife. He's sticking by her through the good, the bad, the ugly, the entanglement. I give him that. Hey, that he's hey. sticking by his wife. They're not divorcing, right? Like it, at this point, it seems like it doesn't matter what she does, says, or thinks. He's sticking by his wife. See, so, hey, that's so wait, a good let him point. Finish, let him finish. Let him finish. Let him finish. So going back to like the main topic of this whole broad, well, this whole show is idolizing our wife and putting her above God. And what he wants. Right. Is that something that is, do you see happening today? Or what do you think about that? Uh, just in general or like specifically? Something in, in the church, do you see the oh. idolization of your wife or, or 
it, it, I've seen a pattern, and do you see this pattern of viewing your wife, doing whatever it takes to make your wife happy is the highest good you can achieve as a, as a husband. Happy wife, happy life. I would say, I think I've seen that with um, maybe like older generations, but just because that was, I should say like that's the one thing that they could control or like felt a sense of control is like being able to, you know, idolize the wife as opposed to like actually talking about things or having communication or um, seeking a solution together. It was just, uh, if I make her happy, that'll fix something or that'll do something better, which is, you know, not always the case. Right. Mm. Got you. Okay, we got three other hey, people Chris. here. We're gonna have to make this quick. We're gonna have to make it quick. I'm Chris, you, you're about to bring up some point. What are you about to say? Yeah, man, I was, I was saying that's a, that was a great point you made. Um, when you were just saying that, uh, you know, Will Smith loves his wife. I think nobody can deny that he loves his wife unconditionally, right, to a certain extent. Um, and I think that in itself, that aspect is great, right? Now, I think we have to we have to tweak it in, in a such a way that, yes, you do need to love your wife unconditionally. However, loving your wife also looks like correction as well, right? And, hey, and leadership, even when it's not uh, easy. Right. And in, in, in saying that, hey, this ain't the right way or that's the right way. I think that's also a form of loving um, unconditionally as well. Right. Because even as being like a parent or something like that or, or any type of any relationship, if we're being honest, there's things where, you know, everything can't just slide. Right. right? right. Even so, in a friendship, if I say I love you, that means I'm going to hold you accountable. We've got, right? we've, got I'm not four, gonna... we've got we got four people in the in the request real quick. I'm trying to get to everybody before we hop off real quick, and this storm tornado comes through. But uh, Justine, thank you for hopping on. You're Appreciate welcome. Your support and yeah, thank you. Thank you, Justine. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Okay. Happy happy we'll spouse. These, happy house. We'll make these quick. We'll make these really quick. Okay, I'm going in order. So all our answers got to be quick to the point. All right, let's see who's next. Happy spouse, happy house. Hey guys, how's it going? Hey, hey, how you doing? What's up? Good, good. How are you? Are you no, I'm at the shopping center. I'm I'm calling in from Sydney, Australia. It's the middle of the wow. day. Wow. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm watching while I'm watching my child, and I'm listening to you guys. I'll be really quick, I promise. Okay. So when I watched what was happening, I grew up with brothers and male cousins. And I remember being at a function my cousin ran. And this guy that I didn't know was in the, he wasn't supposed to be there anyway. He made this really disrespectful comment to me. 16 years old, felt uncomfortable. But I thought, if I let my cousins and my brothers know this happened, they're going to take things into their own hands because they're 17 and hotheads. Mm -hmm. So I didn't say anything. And so I think as women, we need to also take responsibility for the fact that what we do impacts and influences the men that are around us, not just our husbands, our brothers, our fathers, our sons. And I was young then, but now I'm a mom. And I think I'm not going to do anything that is going to make my husband act in a way that I wouldn't want my sons to act in. Mm. So if it's encouraging them to show a lack of emotional, um, you know, a, a lack of emotional control, a, la a lack of physical control, a lack of all the fruits of the spirit, right? If it's not going to encourage that, I'm not going to be trying to influence them to do something that's going to wow. destroy their testimony potentially. Right. Because right. it's not called for. If it's not a physical threat, it doesn't need a physical response. You are intelligent men. You can show an example of how to handle this in a different way. Wow. And I want that's, to support my the men around me to do that. That's awesome. That's, that's And like you said, I mean, I think great. it also touches like you know, especially when a man loves you, whether it's a father or brother or a husband, right. he's willing to die for you, like, right. like on sight, like he's willing to kind of go to that level. So if you know he has that ability inside him to do that, right, you can't, you can't take that lightly, right? You got to understand. And you can't reason with emotion. Exactly. Once you're emotional, you, you have to that's take it. that. I agree. I agree. Yeah. So that's it. That's my two cents. <laughs> oh, appreciate it. Thank you. That was good. All right. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thanks, guys.
Thanks for having me. from Australia. Appreciate it. That's dope. <laughs> Bye. All right. Hey, y'all boys worldwide now, huh? <laughs> worldwide. Let's see. Jessica. Okay, we got Jessica coming in. And then we got two other people. See, I told you this was getting good. Jessica, hey guys. how's it going? Hey, I'm Jessica from St. Louis, Missouri. Um, okay. I don't even need to say anything. The lady from Sydney said what okay. I wanted to say exactly. Um, I'll just recap or, or piggyback a little bit. I just really think that um, as a wife, and I'm not a wife yet, but I use that terminology a lot, speaking it into existence. As a wife, I would never want to put my husband in jeopardy. He could potentially lose this Oscar. So you've been working 30 years to have such a great accomplishment and to have it all taken away at my honor? No, that's not honor for me. That's not honor for our family. That's not honor for God. So no, I wouldn't want to jeopardize my husband. You talk about sacrificing for me. I can sacrifice for you. What was said? Was it really that bad? Am I operating out of flesh? Or am I operating out of a space um, like from the fruit of the spirit? Am I operating from a godly place? You know? And so you have to think about these things before we do it. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, you know, but principalities and high places. That's number one. And then I want to touch back really quick on what we were talking about earlier as far as the whole submitting thing and things like that. If my husband, because we're obviously with two different people, we were raised differently. We're not going to always agree, right? But then it's my job as his helpmate. If I feel like God is telling me something different than what God is telling him, then it's my job to get on my knees and pray about it. But ultimately, he has the final say. He's my husband. He's leading our home. If he's incorrect, God will deal with him. Right. It's my job right. exactly. to pray for him. Exactly. Right. God, God is yeah. not. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. We got to get to the other two people. But okay. That, you, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. No, go ahead. Go ahead. We got to get no, to the other two people real got? quick. But. Who's you going to say, Sheila? I, I kind of want to know, like, with that perspective of, I guess, the woman kind of like, in a sense, kind of protecting the man from doing something crazy or danger mm -hmm. like what in that particular situation would you want jada to do i'm gonna be for me i think for, for me personally i would like so it's kind of like and i think y'all can appreciate this y'all love avengers it's kind of like knowing your husband can go hey. home to transform right but actually getting in front of him and calming him down to be like it, we, we don't need that Right. Because we know you can do that. But like trying to calm you down and say, baby, it's not that serious. We good. Let's just go about it. You know what I mean? Kind of so, just bringing it down. Well, because usually right? sometimes it's only what a woman that can, you know, touch to that and kind of feel right. to that side. But we keep going. What's your name? Where are you from? Um, Thomas from Miami, Florida. Right. Um, I, I love what the two previous um, persons that, 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 that commented and I, I do want to interject that, you know, the man is the covering, but the woman is the protector and the keeper of the house. You know, we protect the kingdom, but it is the woman's job to be the keeper of that kingdom. And whenever that is challenged in the spirit, if we are not, you know, careful or, or, or you know, are spiritually sound, we have to have that accountability within our household first. Because if we don't have it in our household and we have it outside of the household as a sphere of influence, then how could we hear from God? Right. You know, and I think it was a spiritual lesson as far as it, it was a, a, a physical lesson because spiritually it taught us and it taught the world what not to do. It would not to handle in your situation, you know. Um, and as the as the news is going on and everything is going on, I think for us it was a teachable moment for 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 spiritual husbands and wives to be the real covering of their household and to rise up, but also to know that you may not always. 
live in the moment of your actions, but your consequences can be eternal. Mm. Moses spoke a rock. When God told him to speak to it, his whole entire generation could inherit it. The two, the, the witnesses that were sent by Joshua to go into the land were, were, were people that, you know, were supposed to give a good report, but they didn't give the good report. And as a result, they, they did not, um, they did not believe that they can possess the land that Joshua was given to them. Right. So it, it goes to show, and just what, to Denzel's point, Denzel Washington, when he made that point, when you're at the top, that's where the devil is waiting because the devil sits in high places. When Jesus was tempted, he was not tempted in the lowly place. As a man, he was tempted in the high place. It says in the scriptures that the devil took him to the high place and he allowed him to look down. And then he told him, look down on these people. You know, I have the ability to, you know, but as men, as men of God, men of God, we ourselves have to realize when we get to that operation of success spiritually, that our wives are at that same level of accountability and spirituality as well. Mm -hmm. Being equally yoked, mm -hmm. not unequally yoked, yeah. Yeah. you know? Yeah. And that's just my that's my two cents on that. But yeah, you know, I don't want to, to go on on keep you going on in regards no, to that. That's, that's, good. that's good, man. Thank you for hopping on. Thank you. Yes. Where, Thank you. Where are you calling from? Miami. Miami. Miami oh, yeah, that's right, Miami. So everybody, we go live, Cast TV, live every Wednesday at seven o'clock. Um, and we talk about controversial topics from a biblical perspective. Um, all right, last one right here. Wait, I, I, got one, I, got, I got something to say. You good? All right, we got like a few minutes. I mean, you can go ahead and yeah. bring them on, though. But Yeah, bring them on. You just said. So, going back to What's the up, Jada man? and Will. What's up, man? What's up? What's going, going on? Going back to the Jada and Will thing. For those of you saying, like, Jada should have stopped them, he just kind of, it looks like he just kind of got up and just did it, right? So, how would you want Jada to stop him? Would you want her to walk up? And just grab them and be like, "But no, stop! Don't do this." Is that what you're saying? Like, Chris, I know you have that. Well, but the well, no. I mean, like to be honest, think about it. Think about it. How did how did he how did he get up? Right. It, all, all it took was a look to give Will for him to get up. Right. So I'm not saying obviously she had to get up and tackle the guy. Right. But I'm saying that, especially that from outside looking in, it looks like she does have a certain type of control over Will. Right. To a certain extent. So. If she want, she could have made something happen and be like, no, like you don't need to go up but there. Like the, I'm good. I, like I'm good. But the, the, the so point, I think it just depends. The point is this. The point is that it's the whole conversation is people have idolized loving your wife, and if you love your wife a lot, even if it means loving your wife more than God and doing wrong, it's okay, and that's the problem. But what? What's your name, man? Where are you, where are you calling him from? My, my, my name is, uh, my name is Kel, man. K-E-L, like Keenan and Kel in the orange soda. Nice. But, um, <laughs> where are you from? But, uh, just that, just that, um, I'm from Palm Coast, Florida, man. I can, oh, no. I want to add it real quick on that point, which I were talking about. I don't believe it's the woman's responsibility to curb that man. That man, that man, he's, he, if he's supposed to be the leader, he got to lead himself. And, like, it's, it's her responsibility afterwards to kind of, to kind of, like, cur curb him down, you know what I'm saying, calm him down and, and comfort him in that moment, but, like that's the that's the that's the job of a brotherhood right there that right. should have that should have held him back. Right. That's you know what I mean? Because because I mean what man I mean honestly I'll be honest with you I don't like no woman pulling on my arm to when I'm in high emotion you know what I'm saying like right. when you're a man in high emotion you you don't want a woman to you don't want your woman to restrict you exactly. you don't want to hurt her you know what I'm saying so. So you say your boy should have been like, nah, bro. We yeah, ain't doing boys. That. That's 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 that's, that. where, that's that's where the community comes in right I there. I feel that. That's right. That's their job. Because the way I'm looking at it is like this. She spent the better part of a year or two emasculating him, right, in public. So for him to go up there and then for her to, like, try to stop him, it would just make him look, like, weak once again, right? Yeah, but and then, and then other thing, too, man, just to, just to kind of go back to the subject, man, I do believe that a lot of men, and I did it, too. I'm actually a divorcee, man. I did it too, man. When you when you idolize your woman and put your woman on the top like that above God, 
what happens is you think you're making everything right, happy wife, happy life, and well, actually you're going to end up causing resentment later on for her. Okay. Because so she feels like if she, she feels like if she's able to manipulate and control you, then everybody else in the world too. She starts to lose respect gradually, even subconsciously for you because she feels like she can, she like you, like, like you, you bat on to everything she says and she can give you this and you'll, she'll give you the app and you'll eat it. Like your respect comes, the respect is lost. The resentment is, 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 is starts to be built up. The man starts to feel emasculated. You start to go into your own, your own little world of, you know what I'm saying? Dwelling and dwelling in your flesh. Cause you feel ashamed. Cause you don't feel like a good leader. All that mm -hmm. stuff happens on a spiritual level now. And now you're, you're in a world of mess. So, so question, how did, cause you said you, you kind of experienced that to a certain extent. How did you feel like, if, if you're open to talk about it or not, how did you feel like you idolized your wife to where it was negatively affecting either the relationship or your relationship with God? So for me, it was like, I, like, for me, it was, <clears throat> it was very much like I didn't, I didn't stand up enough when it came to things that I knew we shouldn't like, like, if there was something that I knew I shouldn't be doing, I wouldn't do it. But I wouldn't stand up and say, hey, to like too too sternly say hey we're not going there and enforce boundaries i didn't know nothing about boundaries i'm thinking mm. i gotta die for her i'm thinking love bears all things mm. and same exactly 13 mm. you know what i mean so we're and, talking and, about and exactly I, and I'm, 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 I'm living that way I'm, I'm thinking love bears all things and love endures all things and love always hopes exactly just hoping and, right. and bro the, yo real quick the crazy thing about the scripture where it says Husbands, love your wives as Christ of the church and give yourself up for her. We take that scripture in the church and we turn that scripture and we say he gave himself up for her and gave up his dignity, his leadership, right. his demand. <laughs> exactly. You're, saying, right. you're supposed to exactly. die for her, which is you're supposed to defend her. You're supposed to die for her, which means you're supposed to die to your own, to your own, like, to, to her maybe being annoyed for you for a moment because you had to stand up for righteousness, man. You know what I'm saying? You right. got to die to your own flesh and, and what's easy because it's comfortable to say, oh, you want to go over there? Okay, go ahead here. It's comfortable Bro. to do that because there's no strife. It's rather keep peace in my home or or uphold the law of God. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, for, that's the hard thing. That, right that That is exactly what we said earlier before uh, Chris came on and some of these other people came on is that there's this idea that's being tossed around the church of servant leadership and many mm. times the leadership is thrown out the door <laughs> jesus came and served he came and served he washed his disciples feet but he never said hey peter what should we preach on today hey mm -hmm. he, he still led he was a leader and in church like you said a lot of guys are being taught just love just just just, just be just the, the true definition of real love and real leadership is just being a servant and almost mm -hmm. letting her lead and letting her, if it makes her happy, do it. And mm -hmm. that is just as bad as telling a guy, a man to be dominant, domineering and chauvinistic and, and bullying her around and no love. Same thing. Same mm -hmm. thing. So I'm, I'm so great. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and follow you if we don't follow you yet, man. We're going to go ahead and follow you real quick, man. That, that's man, that's man. what it takes, man. Th hey, thank man. You. It's, thank you man, so glory much. God. This is, this is a good conversation, man. You know, this is very important, man. I'm saying, like, if we don't get it right, man, we're going to end up in a bad position. Like, if we don't get it right, like, the thing that we don't under, that not, I'm saying we, we as, like, us for on here. I'm just talking about, like, as a culture sometimes, as in, in a society yeah. sometimes, we don't understand, is that whether we acknowledge it or not, men are leading. And we either are leading passively by allowing mm -hmm. things to happen, and only some women are doing it is because we allowed it to happen, or we're leading, we're leading forcefully, and we're making things happen that are supposed to happen. We're, set, we're either, we're setting the standard both ways. We're setting the standard right. of lackadaisicalness, right. or we're setting the standard of righteousness. Right. Or, right, yeah, right. And, and so that's, I always that's, wondered, that's bro, thing. and I, I don't think this is necessarily biblical or anything like that, but I always wondered, man, like when when the devil was kind of convincing Eve, right? Where was Adam? Like he in that right moment, there. you know what she I mean? Gave, she gave him the fruit. He was right there. Right. So, it, but some like will argue that he was right there. He's, he's there, but he's not there. That right? he wasn't listening. Exactly. Some so, that. like, he's some present. He wasn't paying attention. But you're not protecting your woman to be like, no, exactly. that ain't getting in. Right. Then, like, you know what I mean? So, the other thing, too, is the devil flipped the role. 
The devil told Eve what to do. The animal told Eve what to do. Eve told Adam what to do. Yeah. All right. They flipped it on its head from the way God right. designed it. Completely. Yeah. Completely, well, man. Thank you for thank you for hopping on, man. We got one last we got one last sure. guest. And I'm gonna go ahead and follow you. If you don't follow us too. Yeah, I, I, I just followed y'all, man. Hey man, God bless, man. Thank y'all for giving oh, me the appreciate opportunity it, to speak, dog. man. Yeah. Appreciate it. Have a great one. That man. That's that what we've been was, saying all night. Oh, I, I guess Apollo agrees with him. He said that that's that's yeah. accurate. All right, we got one last one last feminist coming on. So this ought to be interesting. Um <laughs> Woo That man was prophesying, wasn't he, boy? <laughs> that man was prophesizing. Yep. That's funny. Oh man, that man was going in. Right. <laughs> that man oh, was geez. going in, man. Yo. So you what I up? remember we, you uh you had a, a story recently about on your on your Instagram or something about um women's voices need to be heard more in church. Explain that to us. What do you <laughs> <laughs> You know, I I I, I believe, I'm just best, you know, I'm just best with you. Yeah. I, New generation, you know, we got to do things differently. The old, old patriarchy is about to fail, about to be a new era of female leaders and, and women ruling the world. The future is female, and I support every last minute of it. Yeah. <laughs> so what's up, man? I, I, I need a tad of uh, sarcasm in there. All right. What do, you, what do you have for us? No, you know, it's it's some really good conversations, man. And and I actually love that point that uh poetic masculinity was describing. I felt like it was so freaking good. Because to me, I, I, I think about like <clears throat> that verse in Ephesians about, you know, husbands love your wives the way Christ loved the church. And you have to ask yourself, how did Christ love the church? Like how did how did like how did he love the church, right? Right. And and to me, it's it's so many layers. Where first, what is the church? It, 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 no, think about it. Let, let's let's break this down. It didn't say husbands love your wives the way Christ loved the world. All right. It said husbands love your wives the way Christ loved the church. The body, right. you are okay. And there's many different layers you can think about it. And it's and to me, what comes into my mind is revelations. I believe it's chapter three, mm. where Christ rebuked those churches. Right. We rebuked them. I, I, I like I like this interpretation. <laughs> no, but you're right. No, you you are right because when you keep on reading the verse, it says purifying her in the word. Yeah, making her holy so and blameless. There's, there's a level. Think about it. Whether. Whether you believe it or not, there's a lot of different theological schools of thought that people believe different things. So I'm not arguing once saved, always saved. I'm not arguing um, Calvinism, Arminianism. I'm not arguing yeah, those yeah. The theological things. But there's this concept where if you're not abiding in Christ, you are never of Christ. If you are living First John, he who makes a practice of sinning is a child of the devil. Is a child of the devil. Yeah. So there's there's a level where this obedience of leadership is a is a disqualification from fellowship. And I'm not saying that in regards to divorce or anything like that. I'm just saying the idea that men have is this idea of disobedience, disrespect is good. No. First in the first Corinthians, when the Corinthian church was doing wrong, what did Christ, what did what did Christ, the Holy Spirit, convict Paul to do? To say what's going on, exactly. To speak the truth, to call it out. <clears throat> Christ does not allow the church to persist in wrongdoing. Exactly. And like that, like that gentleman said, poetic masculinity said, Christ does not follow the church in sinfulness. Right. Exactly. He doesn't. <clears throat> And so I love I loved everything that he said because I think so many men don't... We've, we've lost that concept, man. Like, so many men lost the concept of what does that mean to be a leader? They lost the concept of what does that mean 
to lead. And, and unfortunately, too many churches make these men the servant. Well, let me be honest. Christ, you know, you know how I get, man. Yeah, Christ go ahead. Is, is the servant leader, but he's the king. Right, Let's get this right. straight, man. Right. Let's get that straight. Right. Before, right. he's not your servant. He's not your homeboy. He's not your best friend. He's a freaking king. Right. Dude. It's his way or the Dude. highway. Or the highway. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not saying that in a rude way, there's there's a level of reverence and there's a way that Christ holds himself in authority. And he's right. not an abusive king. He's not a domineering king. He's not a demeaning king, not a disrespectful king, but he still is a king. Right. And too many men nowadays are just pawns. Right. right. They're all lambs, no lions. Right, they're servants <laughs> and no, they're servants and no leadership. No leader, exactly. And so I think we we they give these guys these medals, and God is like, I'm, I'm. This is my son who I'm not pleased. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm serious, it's bro. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And, and, and I don't know, man. I just that guy. I, I really love what he what he shared because. And I'm not, and I'm not using, and I want to get clear for anybody who misunderstands the message. I'm not using this as a license to do wrong or to be rude or to be nasty, disrespectful, or to hurt somebody or to say I'm the boss. It's my, no, no, you're not God. And if that you're not God, only God can say that. You're not God. But what I'm saying is that there is a level of leadership where you have to put your foot down for the well-being of those that you're leading. Even if it makes them not happy, even if they don't see it for a year or two, even if they don't like it. I think, honestly, I think all four of us can can t touch and agree that, man, we had, you know, strong fathers in our family that, you know, didn't let us do whatever we wanted to do when we wanted to do it. Right. And sometimes we didn't like it, right? Yeah, plenty of whoops. Um, but for the betterment of us and betterment of the family, he was like, no. Like, that's just what we're not doing. And they had to put their foot down. And ultimately, that made us better, obviously, sons, but better men as well. Because we've learned, A, that ain't it. That ain't how to do it. And so if you're a man and you can't put your foot down, are you even, you know, that's what I'm saying. Like are you like you said, you're not, you're not leading your, your, your family in the, in the correct way. Right. Not right. Oh, man. And, and, and I, I think, like, like we said earlier, I know there's new people on now. Being the servant leadership, taking the servant out and just having the leadership or taking the leadership out without the servant is equally just as wrong. Agreed. And, and sadly, you know, what, what I've seen in a lot of churches, like I said, we have new, new people. So I want to say this to them, too, is that today in church, a lot of times they glorify the guy who is the servant and not the leader in his marriage. But uh, they should criticize him just as much as they criticize the guy who's the leader and not the servant. Because it's not what God intends a husband to be. And so, That's what Mark would always say. Most men get in trouble for going too far. Not enough men get in trouble for not going far enough. Mm. Mm. And to me, there's, a, there's two sins. <laughs> He, he got in trouble for going too far. <laughs> <laughs> I know he did. But, but, but to me, there's, there's two sins. And the masculine sins that we're always aware of are the sins of commission, right? You know, and, and the sins of commission are, you know, the idea of doing things that God told you not to do, right? So we're, we're familiar with the sins of commission. But, but there's not. also the sins of omission, yeah, And that's not doing what God has called you to do. Mm. So when you're a man and you're this passive coward that lets your wife or people walk all over you, you're sinning. And, I, and, 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 and that's something that nice guys need to understand. You're not righteous. You're a sinner. Nice guys think that they're, they're good. They're not, you're not good. You, you are allowing a human being to abuse another human being. Whether that human being is you or your children, whoever it is, you are sitting passively by and allowing somebody to take advantage of another person. 
And nice guys don't realize that. You're sinning. You should be a leader and you should step in when you see unrighteousness done, but no, you're passively allowing it to happen. All right. Mm -hmm. Right. And that to me is, is something that a lot of men, like my goal with my children is, I, I talked about it many times, the, the verse for our, our family is Joshua 1 and 9, be strong and courageous, do not be frightened, do not be dismayed for the Lord your God, which wherever you go. The verse for my family is, if you tell me my son is sweet, I might smack him in his face. Because, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Theory, but, <laughs> theory, a theory. You know? <laughs> Uh, theory, I yeah. want my children, my sons, to be strong. God said be strong and courageous. God didn't say be sweet and weak. Be yeah. strong yeah. and courageous. And to me, it's so right. important for men to be strong in their leaderships, in their households, with their families, and to not let pe all, you, all the nice guys in this world, trust me, I, I know a lot of them, they have to realize you allowing someone to take advantage, bully you, walk all over you is a sin. Mm. It is a sin. Cease, I got a question. Go ahead. So why is it that, well, not why is it, but how come we don't, we don't see that that much, though, if we're being honest. Like, like you said, we either see either one of the two extremes, either a woman, not a man, not doing enough, or him just um, doing too much, right? We rarely see like really healthy, good examples of men that are being men, that are doing servant leadership, that are leading correctly, leaving his family in those ways. Maybe it's not promoted. Maybe um, they just, you know, off in their homes doing their thing, right? You just don't see them. But we don't, I think as a, as just as a collectively, we don't see very many outspoken and upstanding examples of that. Right? No, nope. you know why? Is, is that? No, you're right. You know why? Because their wives are silent. And here's why: their wives are silent because they're happy. You see, what you hear the most are the wives who are hurting. They're the loudest. Mm. Shade the Bill Smith. Jo Joel's not posting on social media. Joel's not doing long videos about men and did it she's happily married with a child on the way she don't got she's heaping praises at home what ends up happening is that in today's world there's a lot of rock star men but their women are happy and their women are silent and mm -hmm. these men are also they're not egotistical these men are, are are living their lives taking care of their family they're silent warriors all right and so what ends up happening is that unfortunately the hurting Bitter women, she'll tell all the stories. Right, right, yeah. She'll, she'll go on Oprah, she'll go on Ellen, she'll go on The Real, she'll go on The View, she'll go on World Star Hip Hop, she'll go, she'll go everywhere and tell all the stories about how her man is this and how he don't do that and da 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 So unfortunately, these men are not being celebrated. And I, I would say, I would say this, Chris, kind of what you said, all three, all four of us have had great dads and great examples um, and like he said, we're not, it's not the, um, it's not, it's not shouted about because no, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. It's the oil. If the wheel is oiled, it's not squeaking. And so, right. um, but I do think one thing my, that my dad had mentioned to me was that like, when you see someone in that role doing it the right way, go up to them and tell them like, Hey, this is like, you know, I noticed you, you know what I mean? Keep doing your thing, bro. Just keep doing keep it up. Thing. Yeah. But with that i'm about to have to hop off because you know my wife's telling me to get off here and um she's down you better go do it and i better go do it so uh i'll, I'll talk to you guys later <laughs> all right thanks thanks everybody for hopping on and um Chris, oh you were serious see love <laughs> yeah all right but uh you guys have any last words go ahead you guys got anything um, man, I, I think we really said it, man. Um, I, I think, you know, as being a man, um, you know, trying to be a servant leadership, I think it's both of them things. And I think we have to we have to stand up and lead and be warriors. Right. Um, I, I think that's something that collectively as just a manhood um, that, that we can always get better at. And we have to lean on brothers like each other. Right. 
to say, okay, you got to tweak this and you got to get better at this or don't be afraid to do this or, or do that. I think, I think that's a process of us growing from, you know, being a boy into, into manhood. And I think if we miss that mark, I think not only do we suffer, our family suffers, and then the community suffers, and then the world suffers, right? So, um, you know, men, we have to stand up and be men, men of God. Peace. I agree with everything Chris said. And uh, as for me, um, like this whole kind of like show is about tonight was just about um, not about putting God first and not idolizing your spouse, whether that be man or woman. Um, always making sure you're doing God's will and then you take care of the rest. Right. So uh, it was a good show. Uh, thank you guys for joining. If you haven't already, please follow Cast TV. Uh, we go live every Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Um, I am Sula, that's Zach, Chris, and our feeds down below. Follow them as well if you're not. And uh, have a good night. <laughs>